Jack's Play Who's Heaven, and you're listening to the NBA Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 40. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Dan and Anthony. Hello, Norman. How are you? I'm good. It's fresh. Really now. So, how has your day been? Well, my day's just begun, so, well, you can ask me that later tonight and I'll answer you then. <laughs> okie dokie, lokey. And our guest for this week is Jax Blade. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm glad to be here on the MBS Show, rocking it out with my boy. How's you guys doing? We're doing fine. We're great. Haven't had breakfast yet, but soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know that feeling. I need to get dinner. So, how are you, Jax? I'm fine. I just got off work, just chilling, relaxing, maxing all cool. Thanks for being a guest on the show. We'll get to what you oh. do later on the show. So, anyway, okay. um, moving on. Thank is... you for having me. No problem. It's no, our no pleasure. Problem. And moving on is housekeeping. Starting from today onwards, you can reach our website at mbsshow.com. We're a .com right now. Yep. And all yeah. thanks... And all thanks to Daniel Anthony here. <laughs> so Daniel, tell us what you did. Well, I just bought a .com for the MBS show because, well, I don't like the way that the internet likes to buy and play real estate on domain names, so the moment I have the chance to get one, I will grab it. Yay. You know what? We should grab um, jacksblade07.com. <laughs> <laughs> no, because of the amount of shows on iTunes that match when you search the MBS show, there's, what, Marina Bay Sands, it is that the big, um, uh, what do you call it? synonym or something that our acronym stands for as well as like I'm tired of being associated with the Marina Bay Sands so yeah we are the MBS right now awesome the, the one and only yep yep so anyway on a side note Michelle Kribo and her family are releasing a Christmas album for this up and coming Christmas season so the album is called A Kribo Christmas and you can get her album at cdbaby.com slash artist slash Michelle Kribo while you're over there you can also get her first album Timeless. Songs of a Century. They're all good music, so go get them, please. So now she's going to come up to you with that Apple Bloom voice going, I want it now! <laughs> she did it to us. Please buy my CD. Please buy my CD. <laughs> oh, no. So with that shameless advertising out of the way, we can go into news time. <laughs> oh, advertising, what would we do without you? Anyway, um, Andrew Lehman wins Best Voice for UBCP ACTRA Awards. Wow, that's a long acronym. Okay, so for you guys who don't know what um, UBCPACTRA stands for, it's an acronym for the Union of British Columbia Performers, um, a branch of the Alliance of Can- Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Arts. Say that's that. a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, say that three yeah, times fast. On November 24th marks the first UBCP ACTRA award ceremony and the very first winner for the award for Best Voice goes to Andrea Lipman for her role on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Congratulations, Miss Andrea Lipman, for being the first winner of the award for Best Voice. Links can yeah, be found right. in the show notes. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, you're beautiful. I mean, you're awesome. You're awesome. She's not going to hear that. She's I hope she does. Yeah, you know, I'm congratulating her. Yeah. We've probably got yeah, a million in the inbox already. Yeah. I know. This, this is She's awesome. So and from from the research I did, this was the first award for the... Uh, I'm not going to say it anymore. That's a, long, that's a long acronym. So, so far, I think, has Daniel Ingram won an award for the music yet? Not yet. Um, anyway, this is for Canadians only. Then Daniel uh, Ingram, okay. if I remember, is American. Or is it? I think he's Canadian. Oh. Eh. Okay, I mean, didn't notice that, but for being the first voice on this award, that's awesome because everybody knows being the first matters. Yep. Yep, exactly. I can quote three idiots. Who was the second man on the moon? Nobody cares. Because he <laughs> <was the> first. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Miss Andrew Lipman. You did great. Congratulations. You were great. You were phenomenal. And then I need did... to learn how to speak at that rate. <laughs> we all do. Anyway, Dan, why don't you take the second one? All right. So, Stan Lee is interested in becoming a pony? Stan Lee, he's the comic book legend and the person who's responsible for creating most of the Marvel Universe from Spider-Man to X-Men and even Iron Man comics. So when a comic book legend like him retweets something about ponies, there is no humanly possible way you can not listen to that. So recently, Kamikaze Expo has posted My Little Pony and Stan Lee-related tweets and all of them have been retweeted by Stanley himself. 
Does this mean that he's interested in doing a My Little Pony cameo? The pictures of this and a link can be found in the show notes. Be so boss if he does. That'd be amazing. That would make him 20, 20 oh, 9,020% cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he is the king of cameo, so um, being in My Little Pony, it would surprise me. What would his cutie mark be? Spider Man. <laughs> Yeah, a spider symbol, or a comic book, or something, or a pen, or something like fancy crap like that. I can, I can totally see if somebody doesn't get the reference, we'll be like, what kind of talent is a spider? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not just only that. It's a round circle with eyes and stripes. That's about it. And it's red. And an A. And an A symbol. Ooh, Ooh and A for Avengers. And the fourth wall. That'd be awesome. I don't know. I hope Hasbro calls him to do uh, something in the show or even in the comic books, like, that would be so awesome. Mm-hmm. That would be awesome. That would be amazing. You know? I would, I would seriously get excited for that right now. Oh, the internet will overload. But i seen pictures online saying that, oh, Stanley, don't do it, don't do it, oh, don't do it. Oh, yeah, because haters going to hate. Yeah, but come on, it's Stanley. Whatever he does is cooler. Why won't fit? Yep, yep. And anyway, um, moving on to the next news topic, Beb sees official remix by Daniel Ingram. Earlier this week, Daniel Ingram said that a hard rock version of Beb Seed exists. A few days after he made the post, he released a remix version of the song done by SOS Music Vancouver. You can go and take a listen to the track on his SoundCloud page. Links will be provided in the links in the show notes below. So, um, who here has listened to this remix? I didn't even know he had a remix. I thought that his remix was in the show. Oh. I thought that was his version in the show. Yeah, I didn't know he had his own. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, that's the original mix. And he said that he did a remix for... Sorry, not really remix. He said he, that he did a hard rock version. But I don't think so. This is the hard rock version that he's talking about. But it sounds good. I'll have to check it out then. I haven't had a good listen because I, I heard this in class on a small, tiny speaker, so it sounded like the original. But then this only means one thing. Remix is now canon. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Not sure, but hey. But we've what? got vinyl scratch. What does she do in our house all day? Um, pass out, wake up at night, do job. <laughs> <laughs> what been tolerate. <laughs> yep, what been tolerate. What been tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, why don't you cover this one? Alright, no problem. So, did you miss the chance to get the first issue of the MLP comic? So, you went to your local comic book store in the hopes of getting your copy of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the comic. But only to discover they were all sold out. You were late. So, what you gonna do? Fret not. You can still get a digital copy of the comic. Yep, you can go paperless now using the IDW application or the Comixology application available in the iTunes store or the Google Play store. And you can get your copy of the comic, and it'll only cost you three ninety nine US dollars for thirty two pages of pony goodness. Links Damn. down in the show notes. So thirty two pages of pony goodness, ad free, guys. What do you think? Um, Jax, have you bought your copy yet? Like the paper version or anything, digital maybe? Dude, I don't need a copy. I just go up to someone and I say, "Give me that," and I just get it right <laughs> then and there. That's what I do. Oh, that's badass, man. I know. And that's how I handle it. Someone wants to test. Nobody's going to question you, you. You want a pony magazine? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Love my pony. You got a problem with that? You got a problem with that? Uh, there's two ways that, that could go down. A is, um, I want the My Little Pony comic. And then like the clerk will say, oh, okay, no problem. And then he'll think that it's just for your niece or sister or whatever it is. Or if you go the route of, um, I want a My Little Pony comic, it's for my sister, it's for my sister, then he'll know, yep, he's a brony. Exactly. Or if you walk <laughs> to the shop with a nice pony shirt, you know, some swag going on there, and then they're like, uh-huh, I suppose this is for your sister? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is so true. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway. No, no, it's not for my sister. Uh, uh. My sister, oh, can you sign this? Her name is, uh, her name is Rick. Uh, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, um, do you have a physical copy or a digital copy, Jax? 
I haven't got it yet. Oh. <laughs> I still need to go on board. Soon. <laughs> uh, well, for us here, yeah, I think the Singaporeans might have the physical copy, but um, I'm not sure about us Malaysians because from what I can understand, getting comics here is a bit hard unless they're Japanese comics. And oh, those are called mangas. Archie comics are also very easily available. Yeah, but nobody reads Archie anymore. Hate mail incoming. I can feel it. <laughs> well then, uh, I haven't gotten myself a, my hands on a copy yet because I need to go and reload my charge card. But I've already seen the preview that came out so long ago and I'm still... I, I really want to get it. Yeah, I mean, the comic is worth it, guys. Like, it's three ninety nine for 32 pages and the story... It continues off from where Chrysalis left off. Is it like a season 2 to 3 filler? It could be, or it could be its own story, because the only thing that's connecting between the show and the comic is just Queen Chrysalis, that's about it. And I think what they're trying to do is using that as its own story. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Jax, have you seen uh, the preview? For the comic? Yeah, they came out with three pages. Oh, no, I missed it, dude. I've been busy with stuff like this. I missed it. How does it look? It's amazing. The third page already contains a truckload of references. Oh, awesome. Uh, I'm going to check it out then. I'll probably just go on, like, Google or something like that. I'm not, I don't know. Uh, wait, it's available on iTunes. Yes, iTunes. Yep, it's available on iTunes. Um, for us, we don't have the comic store on iTunes, so we have to use third-party apps like Comixology or IDW. Or my American iTunes account. Oh, but still, <laughs> you need to have money to buy. Yeah, that's a problem. iTunes America won't yeah. take my card. Yeah, well, what you could do is, okay, uh, for you guys out there who has who are not American but still have an American account, what you could do is ask someone in the States to buy you a gift card and re- reload it in your iTunes account. So basically, you have cash in your iTunes account. I think you could do that, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, so you could do that. So... You can buy comics or apps. Do they have the iTunes? Do they have the iTunes gift card in Singapore? They do, but it's only for Singapore. No, sorry, no, they don't. They okay. do have an Australian version, but it's only for Australian Crikey, accounts. Man. Crikey, mate! <laughs> 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 uh, oh, all the hate emails coming to us. <laughs> well, don't blame us. Blame Apple. They don't want to. They don't want to cater to us. I was talking about Jax, but hey, if they want to send hate mail to Apple, do it too. That's not fair, Apple. Do <laughs> <laughs> you? Oh, um. Yeah, that, they did it now. <laughs> Some stupid. Uh, but the comic. Apple logo. <laughs> oh, God, no. That was a picture of her listening to an iPod and the Apple logo's a cutie mark. <laughs> oh, <Exactly>. no. <laughs> and oh, um, one thing I noticed in the comic. They, they they had a derpy in there and a changeling t- change sorry, a changeling change into derpy and oh. her eyes were normal and the way that they derped the eyes it was so funny. So what hap- what happened? Can you spoil it or? I, I could, much? but people will scold me and it was so funny. Seriously. All right then, you heard him, people. Go out and buy it. We're not spoiling it here. Yep. We ain't no snitches. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the heck, bab seeds would say. Yeah. Anyway, forget her. Let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is MLP Facts of the Week. All of these informative facts can be found at twitter.com slash MLP Facts. Did you guys know that originally Applejack was supposed to eat the marzipan mascarpone meringue madness only to fire back that she's good at not leaving evidence unlike Rarity, Fluttershy, and Ribodash? I did not know that. I, I like that thing that, oh, she's so sweet when she didn't touch it, so... That would make me go, oh, AJ. Yeah, uh, but no. Or like background for me. <laughs> oh, background for me talk. Wait, is this Fanon or Canon? Because I'm getting confused. This is, um, it's cutting yeah. room floor. Oh, cut it. Yeah, I didn't have the time, right. so cut it away. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's messed up. I'm glad they didn't keep that, because I would have been like, oh, that, that's messed up. That yeah, messed but up. if like, they did uh, keep it, how do they explain the situation that Remember, kids, doing, when doing something bad, you need to hide stuff. No, exactly. <laughs> you can do whatever you want as long as you can get away with it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she will she will fess up to it, but how does she, how does one explain the whole situation? She's the element of honesty. She does it herself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it you could know, I'm pretty be. sure, like, the way it would have been, it would have just been, like, 
I thought I, they wouldn't catch before, and then she takes off her hat. She had a piece of it under, and she just eats it in the credits <laughs> roll or something. Oh god! <laughs> oh, that, that would be still be fun. But anyway, did you guys know both Celestia and Twilight has demonstrated abilities to use dark magic? Yeah, season three premiere showed that. When yeah. they find that evil fart cloud that was taken over the crystal city. <laughs> Uh, he is an old fart. <laughs> but seriously, um, with this information, fanfic writers, you have ammunition. Did you guys know that Derpy was one of Twitter's worldwide trending topics for a short time on February 24, 2012? Two days before, before the official off? premiere. Sorry. Oh, no, God. Two days before the official premiere of the MBS show. Really now? Oh. <laughs> huh. awesome. I did not know that. Episode. <laughs> M- MBS show facts. <laughs> but, wow, Derpy. Was this the one with the Derpy? Was that the Derpy time she talked? Yeah, I was, think I so. thought that was like January. Oh, I forgot. It's probably doing the correction. Really? Oh, okay, that's probably what it was, the correction then. Oh, because I'm trying to remember hard. Um, our episode when it came out was... Um, nah, I can't remember. 26, 26 February. Yeah, I was trying to remember what, what was the episode then. You live stream with Emilio. Yeah, I know. I was trying to remember what was the episode then, like, on show. Because I remember the show was still running when we did the show. <laughs> yeah. Well, just think of, like, um, the premiere, the season two finale was, like, in April, so... Hearts and Hooves was... It was two episodes after Hearts and Hooves. Derpy actually started out on Twitter with a lot of um, stuff regarding her correction, especially with the Save Derpy campaign. Have you all heard of that? Yeah, I have. Oh yeah, I heard about that. That was sad how it didn't get through, but... Yeah, the hashtag Save Derpy. Yeah, but there, there's many um, political reasons behind it with um, Derpy, because Hasbro wants to be politically correct, not offend the people that are offended, and at the same time try to not offend the fans that... Fans. Yeah, like Hasbro was in a tight spot, so... Mm. Yeah... It was a loose loose situation for them. True. Mm-hmm. Careful, rain cloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had to bring that one in. Okay, anyway, moving on to the next topic. It's My Little Pony Season 3 Review. And on this episode, we review episode 5 of Season 3. Magic Duel, what is it called? Yeah, Magic Duel. Yes, Magic Duel. So, guys, what do you think of the episode? That was a badass episode. I mean, I can say bad. Right, hold on. Is yep, you can. Okay. okay, badass episode. A bad donkey episode. <laughs> it was like so cool, and like the fight scene in it was incredible. But then they, and then like at the end, that was like some M Night Shyamalan thing. I'm not gonna ruin it for you guys because you should have watched it. Well, I probably ruined it in like five seconds, but that's your problem. So one, yeah. two, three, four. Oh, by the way, real quick. All right. So what happens is. Crap, I forgot, but that's not the point right now. But anyways, is um, it was a badass episode. Watch it. But they, and then they messed up the part. They did something that irritates me in shows when they like have a character who's quiet, and then like they find something and no one can hear them. Then all of a sudden, one of the loud characters comes and takes the book. And they're like, oh, look what I just found, and so like that irritates me. <laughs> oh, so that much. one, yeah. It irritates me so much in cartoons. I hate when they do it. They do it in so many things. It just, uh, it really grinds my but They did it in Littlest Pet Shop as well. I know they did with that panda. Yeah, they Penny. Took, like, took, yeah, they took what about her. Nice? Exactly. That, that irritates me so so terrible. Yeah, but the payoff for this one was really good because... Well, anyway, let's let's start from the beginning. So, in the beginning of the show, we have Twilight Sparkle trying out her magic trick on... No, sorry. No, not yet. We had this uh, character going into a shop being a wallet warrior. Yeah, sorry. My bad because... Um, wrong picture. Like, anyway. That's um, right. Hooded character goes into shop and wants to find something. And who here got the gremlin reference? I did. It felt like a Dota 2 secret shop kind of thing. Really? I don't know. I don't, I don't understand the other reference that you're making. No, uh, Gremlins? you never seen Gremlins? The movie with the little green scaly guys who go... <laughs> like, laugh. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of when they first go into the shop and get the Mogwai. But, yeah, it was cool. 
But I like the, how do you say, have you watched the Dota 2 trailer? No, not really. Not a big fan of Dota. Uh, neither am I, but I just watched the trailer and it's a good animation. And it's about that dude who owns that secret shop and he's starting to tell you, if you want strength, I can give you this. If you want this, you, I can give you that. And that guy at the shop had that vibe. Oh. Well, <laughs> he, well, if the reference, if this character reference comes from uh, the Gremlin movies, um, sounds logical. Yeah, it does work. So anyway, yeah, um, Trixie or oh, Mysterious Pony goes into shop asking for the Alicorn Amulet. The shopkeeper says, no, you can't. And plops down a bag full of gold. And my favorite line from that guy is, would you like that to be gift wrapped? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like somebody hacked the MLP game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, well, overall, the intro was pretty good. Yes, and now the word alicorn is canon. For the first time in the canon series. Already. Really? I, I thought... Mean, they it never was canon already. It was never mentioned. Really? Sure? Yeah, not until this I episode. I thought Discord said it. Did he? I think so. In the first... I, I have to rewatch it. I haven't seen it in the first two. They always refer to them as a princess, never as an alicorn. Huh. Well, if it's canon, then... Wow, awesome. So anyway... um. Seems legit. <laughs> yep, yep. So anyway, moving on to Twilight and practicing with animals. I just love the banter between Fluttershy and Twilight here. It's like, um, Fluttershy is so scared for the animals where they are... Uh, well, the animals don't really care. And the she was going to like throw around. Yeah. yeah, she was like, if you, I swear if anything happens to them, I will freaking shove so much of it down yours. It's just like, that's how <laughs> awesome she was. Uh, it reminds me of... Uh, Parents with their kids, like the the guy who's doing something knows what they're doing, but the parents don't really trust them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Is that kind of situation? That was awesome. Uh, after finishing with the magic trick, Rainbow Dash came barging in, grabbing Twilight to go to town because there's a mysterious pony in town who's doing silly magic tricks. The last time a pony walked into town with a hoodie was a Korra. And um, don't forget the Moon Princess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Moon Princess. Hoodies are not canon as well. Make you look mysterious. Actually, <laughs> exactly. Actually, it's... And they, uh... Apparently, they change your eyes, too. Because every time they do it, like, their eyes are like Avatar State, like... Just going... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, first victim to be blasted by said magic is Rarity. With an awful coloured dress. Oh my god, that dress looks awful. I think it was pretty cute. She just has that OCD that didn't let her let, let, accept those colours. Oh, those colours are bad. Neon green with brown. Ugh. <laughs> and um, once in town, Trixie reveals herself with red eyes, saying that she wants revenge. And if Twilight Sparkle doesn't accept the duel, she'll just keep casting CD magics on ponies, like blasting Rainbow Dash with a spell that makes one of her wings big. And before anybody says, yes, her one wing angel look does look like she from, from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> yeah, you just want to go, Someone do that now. Someone take a picture of Rainbow Dash. I think it's already been done. Okay, well, yep. it's already been done, like a boss. Like a boss. <laughs> Yeah, and the most silliest one is um, combining snips and snails on together. Oh my god. What? Yes. I, I, when I saw that, I was like, what? <laughs> Why? That's so nasty. Why? Oh, the fandom knows what it's all about, but uh, no. <laughs> I know. It made me feel so uncomfortable at that moment. I was like, I'm, I think I don't know a unicorn. Mm -hmm. You've been tainted. <laughs> yeah, and... Moving on with the whole thing of, uh, with Trixie's flashback. Oh, she got humiliated. Nobody likes her. And she has to work on a rock farm. A rock farm, for crying out loud. Under Pinky's dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well at least we... Like, Sorry? No, and then like she went up to Pinky and was all like, oh, yeah, your dad brought me, told me to give you this special rash cream. And Pinky's like, oh, no, that's just toothpaste, toothpaste, and then she ate the water. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's at least comic we st today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one. So, anyway, uh, at least we still know that uh, Pinky's parents are still living on the rock farm. Wait, I, 
Wait, was that even her dad? I, I, you know what? I don't want someone to come up and be like, no, that, that was freaking not her dad, okay? That was someone else at the rock bar. I'm like, I, 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 I so I'm not 100%, but I would think it was Pinky's dad. I, I think it uh, is. It is. It is Clyde Pie. I think it's Clyde Pie. Okay. Not sure about the name, though. Well, that's a kind of name. Yeah. And Pinky here lose her mouth. Well, she won't be speaking much. <laughs> Shouldn't be breathing much either. She lost her damn nose. <laughs> when that happened, I was like, Trixie, you done it now? Exactly. How dare you? There, there's an animation done by uh, Mr. Ponyator. Mm. He's done it already? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Ponyator and Galaxy Art both did it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're fast. They're freaking <laughs> amazing. I'm actually friends with uh, Galaxy Art. Me and him talk all the time and Skype and stuff like that. We play freaking games and stuff like that. Awesome. So, um, moving on to the duel, um, there, there's a lot of things happens here, like Trixie blowing up a cart and almost smashing someone with it, and Twilight picks it up in the nick of time, and if I remember right, Trixie throwing pie and Twilight Sparkle yeah, use a summoning Fair spell to call out Paris Sprites. That is so awesome, and I was shocked at that, really. What, did they remember the Paris Frights? Yeah, because it's a callback to the previous episodes. Like, Paris Frights still exist. And mm -hmm. once you feed them, they multiply. Yeah, so. See, the one thing, I like how they call back to that, but the one thing that I really wish they would just call back to is when Pinkie Pie gets sad, her mane gets straight. Because, like, in the last episode, when she was all sad, because I, I guess I'm in the rare, I, prefer, I really prefer Pinkie with a straight mane. I'm, even though the, the curly mane captures her personality so well, but I freaking love her straight mane when she is depressed and so like I just I think it fits that personality so well. It's just awesome to see it. So I really wish they continued to do something like that. I I think yeah, for the too. straight I, I main, it's sorry. I think for the straight main, it's more of paranoia and paranoia. She lost and, her mind. She wasn't really depressed. She just lost her mind and uh, too many pinky pies. She didn't lose her mind. She was just plain depressed. Yeah, I mean, it's paranoia yeah. and depression mixed together because she thought her friends didn't like her, but now she knew it was her fault and she was she had herself to blame. So. Mm, it could but be that. She, she blew a fuse right there because she started talking to the flower bag and the bed of the flower and <laughs> yeah. you know, exactly. all those people. Yeah, and yeah, the next, was, sorry. And then well, she forgot her old birthday. <laughs> exactly. Well, she forgot that for her whole forehand. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next uh, duel is um, a scene that Dusty Cat would be so proud of. Mustache! Mustache! I think she could join Movember because Movember is pretty awesome. And she would win Movember. <laughs> yeah. And on to the spell that breaks um, Twilight Sparkle is the aging spell. After losing to that, Twilight Sparkle got kicked out and a big giant dome came on to Ponyville. Simpsons reference, anyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Simpsons reference. And then, like, I think there was one art uh, picture where they had a human outside the dome and the ponies were putting their hooves up and the person was there. So I kind of got that kind of vibe. Like Twilight, but, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So I was, that was awesome, too. That was amazing. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, uh, references aside, like, I got no idea why Trixie did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just wanted Twilight uh, to be out and not get back in anymore. Yeah, it's true. But the the reference that we got, because I remember in The Simpsons, uh, they were running low on oxygen supply. No, they were just like, you know, the town is creating so much pollution that they should be isolated from the world. Yeah, and also remember? oxygen supply is running low. I, I think that was them. Oxygen remember. and beer and all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah. Remember when that one guy... He was like, I can't choose. Should I stay? Should I go? I want to lose my friends. And then I'll be away. And then he, like, he gets crutched. <laughs> that was so... I present to you the new and awesome drill that can drill through anything. Wait, it's outside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, those are the kind of jokes that are subtle. And okay. Um... Subtle, but they make me roll on the floor. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they, they so do. <laughs> And well, after Twilight's banishment, um, Ponyville has been turned to Trixieville. I know she's a bit like that. And most of, sorry, all of um, Twilight Sparkle friends have been forced to work for Trixie and her stupid demands, like pull a chariot without wheels because she doesn't trust wheels. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the hey, most. Come on. 
your previous cart had four wheels and it worked perfectly. Exactly. <laughs> there's a story behind that. So um, well, remember, the thing was altering her mind, so that's probably why. Yes, yeah, true. Give her a couple more weeks and logic will be out of her head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and well, Twilight Sparkle went to Zakura to train, and anybody got the Star Wars vibe here? Yep, Yoda. Yoda vibe. I really wish she had a training montage like the Family Guy. <laughs> were special. That would have been so wrong. <laughs> that would have been the baddest donkey moment ever. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be so awesome because, like, to me, like, Master Zakura, like, oh my god, Star Wars reference insert here. And, well, I'm um, moving ahead because what can we say about Star Wars that we haven't seen yet? To the library where Fluttershy found a book and Jack has express his dislike for this scene. But the payoff was good. I like the payoff after that because Rainbow Dash said, the one shall go out and tell Twilight is Fluttershy and Fluttershy yelped so hard. Yeah. Yeah, the payoff was so good because Fluttershy was so quiet and then she went so loud. Ah! Yeah. Gosh, that cuteness was so high. Yeah. And, and then, uh, I think I've made this theory about how I tend to like MLPs that the episodes that make me feel uncomfortable are the ones that I really learn from the most. <laughs> Especially those kind of moments it's like Fluttershy is so soft and then she's like, but look at this book right here. And I'm like, have I been in this situation before? Why do I feel so bad for her? Exactly. I've been in that same situation before so many I've been times. Into it so many it times, yeah. irritates me. It irritates me to no end. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and then somebody else gets the idea, and then you're like, that's what I've been saying all along, damn it! But it was funny, I should freaking, I could have busted the freaking teeth. <laughs> stupid little purple mother. <laughs> okay, calm down, let's move on to the next scene. Uh, getting Twilight. And um, here's where the scene where Twilight asks Snips and Snails. Of all people, seriously, Snips and Snails are pulling a cart without a wheel, like... Uh, how does one do that? Pulling a cart without a wheel and asking children. Like, um, I know MLP, the mobile game, um, <laughs> says <laughs> stuff. Yeah, I mean, that that's there, but um, in the show, really? I have Princess Celeste working in the bowling alley. I'm like a communist. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you. Anyway, um, here's the best scene after that. Beavers... Um, waking the dome, pulling out a hollow, hollow, what is it called that? Um, sea trunk. Yeah, trunk. Oh. And came out cute Fluttershy with her so awesome costume. And who could remember, who could forget the line? Oh, this is me being brave. I want to be brave at home, lock in my closet with my teddy bear. Teddy bear. <laughs> that is so no, cute. I will, <laughs> no, I will say this. Like, one thing I think is, so like, the dome... She can lift it up and just put it down. So why can't they just dig a hole and go under it? And then because of the of log. Because <laughs> of the log? Whatever. Do they need a log if they can dig a hole? And oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Just dig a hole. They act like they can't dig a hole and just pop up. Freaking Big Mac was digging when he thought it was a dog. So like, <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, that could be true. But, you know, we don't want to risk setting off Trixie's state-of-the-art security system. Yeah. But, and the MacGuffin doesn't say that. So... They need to stick with the script. Bye. <laughs> oh, scripts. And then the second duel. This second duel is really interesting because before the fight, we have Lyra enjoying a haste movie. Call out for the first one. And how does Lyra hold her movie? I got no idea. But actually, just a bit before that, um, when Twilight was in, was with Zakora, when Zakora told her, do you want to need, you want to use your magic to, uh, I don't know, the line, and then you need to you, go be use the six or something like that? Yeah, something like that. What did you all speculate was going to happen? I know it couldn't be the element of harmony, but... I thought it was, actually. That's what I thought it was, too, since you said six. And I was like, six, six. Oh, elements are, and then it wasn't. It was like, oh. Yeah, because the, if you guys remember, right, you if you want to use the elements of harmony, you need to grab the elements um, jewelry from Celestia, and Celestia jewelry. was in... <laughs> what would you call them? Seriously. Amulets or charms or jewelry? <laughs> Oh, there was, let me, bling, bling. Yeah, oh, yeah, bling. <laughs> let me say this, there was one thing, though, that where they, that cracked me up, I was in tears, at. it was like, where they said where Celestia was at, Saddle Arabia, <laughs> my Whoa. god, Saddle Arabia, <laughs> that, is, that just got me. 
<laughs> Funny enough, um, in Saudi Arabia, they're um, horses, not ponies. Exactly. <laughs> camels. Camels? They're not camels. Were they? I think they, they are camels. I thought they were Saudi, horses. But, you know, like, who knows? We'll have a camel cameo soon. No, they're horses. Seriously. I'm looking at the picture right now. At the ending? Yeah, but we're going too fast. At the ending? Oh, okay, yes. We're going too fast. We're going too fast. Yeah, I'm lost. Never mind. Let's get back. So, anyway, um, the magic duel. First off, with Trixie using her aging spell again, and Twilight Sparkle using her brains, um, use her own version of the aging spell. And this aging spell is so, so awesome. Adorable. You see? The aging spell she used was so adorable. <laughs> yes. So much daw. And the uh, duplication spell with two rainbow dashes and one pony playing ten instruments. That was interesting. Yeah, I knew the one pony ten instruments wasn't a trick. Yeah, but... Yeah, me too. I felt that. Yeah, but hey, too bad she did I, I, I was hoping she played the... Uh, Monica. Po- pony polka song because... Oh. oh, that would be so good if she did that. She just, it already appeared she... in the last episode. Yeah, but that was... Let me say, how could she play harmonica? She didn't have a mouth. She, I, think, I didn't think she played the harmonica. No, she didn't. But there was a sound, I think. Really? It was one of the things because she was blowing on him with the Paris Pride. She was like, boom, 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 oh. harmonica. She was one of the things in front of her mouth. Oh, so you're saying that this, she couldn't play that song because there's no mouth. All right. She, there was a tuba there. You can't play a tuba without a mouth. No, she had something she was blowing on. <laughs> oh. oh, God, no. You know what? Keep this. Oh, God. Oh, Let's God. just say it. Let's take this. Let's, uh, she had something that when she made air come out of her mouth, it would make a noise. So. Let's just say it's Pinky Physics. Pinky Physics. That's all we need to know. Pinky Physics. Yep. And the last um, spell that Twilight did was changing a mare into a colt. Uh, my mind blew when she said that. I was like, no, yeah. no, 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 Don't make Rule 63 canon. No, 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 no. Oh, 63, it's canon. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought it was. But um, as soon as we found out, Trixie took off her amulet, took Twilight's amulet, and, well... You mean door stopper? <laughs> yeah. And well, got tricked. And from that point on, she revealed that Twilight didn't know any spells, just knew how to use a real bad situation to her advantage. And, and when I, that was a fire choice, M. Night Shyamalan. Yep. Funny enough, Philly, um, Earth Pony, and Philly Unicorn are just uh, Apple Bloom and Sweetie, Sweetie Belle. Belle. And old Applejack is just Granny Smith recolored. Yeah, you can tell by the eye. Yeah, I was... No, not really. Eyes, because actually. when I saw the eyes, they're the same color. Like, I, I, I seriously take a long look at Philly Rarity and Philly Applejack, and they have the same color's eyes. Like, green for Applejack and blue for um, Rarity. Girl. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we're Rarity. Yeah, but like, uh, the one time they messed up was, and I thought it was an animation error because I thought she was actually doing it, was um, when they did Granny Smith colored his apple. They didn't change her eyes. Really? Yeah, they didn't change Granny Smith's eyes. They were still uh, the whatever her Brown. eyes are. They weren't. Yeah. They oh weren't yeah, I, I I'm looking at it here right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And Big Mike eyes are green. Is it? No, right? Yeah, they're green. His eyes are green. But I heard that. Yup. I'm like, does it run in the family? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> so anyway, oh, God, moving they had on. Me going there. I thought they she actually did. Yeah, I mean, so um, rule thirty. Uh, sorry, rule sixty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a PG-13 progress, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm oh. sorry. Um, rule, rule 60 what, Dan? 363. Okay. Rule 63 is not canon. Nope, it's not. But it no. does bring up the question. Is, is yeah, true. Fan service is canon. But it does bring up the question. Um, does um, gender spell exist? Probably. Yeah. Maybe not. And after near but the nonetheless, end. that scene... Is the one ultimate scene, in my opinion, throughout all three seasons and all the comics and the movies, that is the scene that proves the phrase "friendship is magic" the yes. best. Yeah. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Literally. And also, um, nearing the end, Trixie redeemed herself by saying sorry and acting all cute near the end, where she tripped on herself and kept on running. I wonder where she's going. That's so to be funny. <laughs> hey, you know. Uh, if if you if you watch a lot of animes, that happens a lot. That's what I like the fact that she redeemed herself. The first time it was like, ah, oh, she's a freaking. You know what I want to say, but I'm not going to do so. Until she freaking just goes off. 
And then now she's back, and she's a somewhat good guy. So I like that. I like that. That made me feel warm and soft. I don't yeah. know, know where she went. But Trixie's been missing the point with her abilities, really. She's just a performer. Like, she does um, illusion spells. She does fireworks. She's just a stage performer. Why does she want to... Uh, I guess when you've grown up, you forget the the facts of life. Mm, so true. Yeah. And um, looks like Pinky's not the only one that can break the fourth wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Twilight is mastered. In fact, in that comic that is called... Pinkie Pie says goodnight. Of late, Twilight has been breaking the fourth wall with her. Yeah. Awesome. I, I think that one is just Pinkie Pie. Uh, I think it's just Twilight being like... No, oh. it's not. Because now Twilight says that it's dangerous. So P- she built Pinkie a laboratory just to break the fourth wall in. And now Twilight <laughs> has gotten into the lab and says that, you know, we are here to study this specimen that can see us to this thing you call a street. <laughs> <laughs> well, for fall breaking. Almost canon, almost canon. So anyway, um, with that done, uh, what do you guys give it out of five? I gave it eight out of ten. Oh, out of, I mean, out of five, I gave it four out of five dumbbells. <laughs> four out of five dumbbells. Awesome. That's what I did. <laughs> so, Dan, what about you? 4.2. 4.2. Um... Why such an abs- uh, absurd number with the two? Well, it would be two, four point two five around there, four and a quarter. Okay, even more, or, or even more craziness. Why? Why the numbers? Why? What didn't you like? I have to read. I, I like this episode. It was really great in terms of um, all the things that how it was developed and all the fact that there were so many references. But I can't possibly rate an episode higher than too many Pinkie Pies because that's my new favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had a four point five. Oh, you. Well, for me, I'll give it um, four door stoppers out of five. To me, I don't know. I mean, I never give a episode five out of five because having to, to say that a five out of five needs to be perfect, no flaws. Um, I really enjoy it kind of situation. And you can watch it any time. Yeah. Do you want an episode without flaws? Like, you know, every pony is flawless? What is it? G3. Oh, hell no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Every bone is flawless. In terms of story, not... <laughs> always dress in style and they teach you games to play. Oh, God, so no. Amazing. <laughs> oh, God, no. But overall, this is a good episode. For Trixie fans, you would love it. And for you fanfic writers out there, there are a lot of things that you could use because... I see a lot of the ring reference because the Alicorn amulet equates to the one ring. <laughs> Give you... That could be true. I mean, I need to see whether there are any more amulets or jewelry for that matter that can do such things. Well, like uh, the six elements of harmony, those necklaces, those are pretty powerful as well. Yeah, but you need to have in sync with your element or and else... you need to have the big crown thingy. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway... um. Like I said, this episode was good, um, full of tricksies. And next week's episode is... Um, give me a second, let me look at the title. Oh gosh, dang it. Don't spoil it for me! Um, Sleepless in Ponyville, next week. That's um, next week's episode. And why spoil? It's just announcing what next week's title is. Okay, good. I thought you were about to tell us the plot synopsis. And I would have had because the episodes that I enjoy the most are the ones that I don't hear about a title until the moment the episode starts. Yeah, I didn't even know Trixie was in this till Friday because someone told me. Oh, okay. Well, um, I knew about it when I was looking for the stream and then I went to Equestria Daily and I'm like, oh, Seth is at it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, um... And she see her doing the caramel dancing in the post. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, Seth, you. So anyway, um, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And this week we have Jack's Blade. So, Jax, enjoying yourself? Ah, yes, I am having quite the time. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, okay, no problem. So, Jax, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and Hello, what you do? My name Sorry. is JaxBlade07, and um, I um, am a brony, and I enjoy lifting weights, and I, that's my special t- I guess. I guess that's all I really can say. Like, um... Uh, I have no idea how I got so popular. I just, I lift weights. It's like, I lift weights. I like ponies. Yeah. <laughs> and then people just started following. <laughs> that, that is interesting. Your popularity is something to be amazed at. 
But before we move on, and silly me for forgetting this at the beginning, we have to ask you the four important questions. And luckily enough, we don't know what your answers are. So question number one is, who is your favorite pony? What a shy, all day, every day. Oh, no wonder you were defensive when she didn't get her props. I think exactly. everyone would have gotten defensive. What? I think everyone would have felt that. Nah, I find it funny because, like, it's the um, quiet po- quiet person trope. Like, quiet person finds something and then somebody else gets credit. And quiet person is like, yay. And even Pinky is going, and she gets more airtime. Exactly. And I, just, I was just like, I'm full of shy. But the payoff for this episode is we get to uh, watch Fluttershy in a very cute outfit. Yeah, and then she also did threaten Twilight at the beginning. So that <laughs> yeah, good. that was good. Yeah. That was boss. That was really good. That's true. Fluttershy is my favorite too. I mean, I'm not kidding here when I say Fluttershy is my favorite, but... It's not about me anymore. It's about you. So, um, what's your favorite episode? Yeah, yeah. No, Fluttershy is awesome, dude. She is. She's so adorable. She was the reason I first became a Just seeing her, just <laughs> I just felt something warm inside. Oh, really? No. Well, uh, we'll go to that later. But so, what's your favorite episode? Favorite episode? <sighs> Lesson Zero. Oh, oh yeah. that, that one cracked me up. I that was literally an episode where I was in pain laughing. Oh. Yeah, exactly. oh yeah. Let me guess. You you love that episode because of Fluttershy's uh, fatality on the bear, right? You have no idea yeah, how many people food. I converted to uh, freaking bronies with that because I was like, yo, you know they kill people in the show, and I just show her <laughs> bear's neck, and then like I don't show them the rest where she's massaging it, so they like start watching it. And, like, <laughs> it's just like I tricked them. <laughs> you tricked uh, me. Curse you. Exactly. Well, now we've got like, footage of King Sombra getting his ass kicked, so basically... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> you, you know, I, th- I think um, most of the Fluttershy fans would have the same episode, um, same ep- favorite episode, because I have to say, ep- uh, Lesson Zero is also my favorite. Yeah, Fluttershy. No, I mean, Fluttershy is great in it, but like this, uh, I think what captured it the best for me was Twilight's Gollum scene just because that cracks me up. <laughs> you can you can oh god that is crazy um, so anyway um do the side questions Jack have you ever tried doing voices because you seem pretty good at it uh, no, uh, I do voices for fun. Like, uh, I can do, like, Bane's voice from Dark Knight. Oh, I'm a bad dad. Uh, I'm a I'm a mistake. I'm just like, I just BS that. I do that in the drive through at work. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <That's> like... <laughs> awesome. So, um, moving on to the third question. How did you become a fan of this multicolored pony show? <laughs> Okay, well, um, originally what happened was I was on this site called Skill.com, and I watched a lot of reviews on it. And um, there was this one, they had this little post back in, like, May 2011 of those uh, idiots who made the date movie, disaster movie, epic movie, all those movies, whatever. And they had another movie coming out, and I was just like, man, how the heck are these people still getting money? That could go feed the orphans. It could, like, (laughs) feed so many helpless people. And then, like, I go and comment, and I'm like, oh, my God. I can't believe these people are doing this crap. Let's go beat them up. Who's with me? And then the next comment after mine is this picture of this yellow and pink Pegasus phone A screaming in frustration. It's like, oh, and I just click on it like, oh, what's this? And it's like, oh, I am so fresh here. I can just scream. And I think it's going to be this big, just gigantic yell. And it's just like, ah. and I'm just like, oh, that was adorable. <laughs> and can I start watching a bit more of these clips? And I'm just like, Watching these clips uploaded by this dude named Kyra Spawn because he just uploads a bunch of random clips. And yeah. I keep watching them, watching them, and I'm just like, I really like this yellow and pink one. And then, like, she was just making my heart melt. So then uh, I did not know about the Brony community at all. I thought I was unique because I was just like, you know what? This show is awesome. I'll watch. I'll watch it. No one will ever know. And I'm just, like, watching all these, like, little clips. And then, um... I think it took 11 days for me to, like, admit that I was one because I didn't really sit down and just, like, put them on on the background on my uh, uh, 
uh, on demand service. So I would just watch him at, like in the background. I wasn't really paying attention. Then um, I think I just sat down, watched the first two episodes, and I was like, and then the part that got me hooked was um. When they're singing the Giggle at the Ghostly song, it's just like, when I was a little filly and the sun was going down. And Twilight's just like, tell me she's not. And then I just cracked up at that. She's like, this fool is singing a song when we're trying to fight a nightmare horse and you're freaking singing all in front of the freaking dangerous floors. That cracked me up. I rewound that like 20 times when I saw it. And then like I just watched them in any order after that. And then I got to 26 and I just – was like, oh, where's 27? Where the heck is 27? So I was just like, like watching them over and over until 27 came out. And I was just like, oh, my God, good. Oh, man. That, that sounds similar to me, but um, how I got in was I look at pictures and um, wanting to know what's the phenomena is I just watch episode one and two and Giggle the Ghostly cracks me up because like, um, oh, God, this person is singing. Why is she singing? And then exactly. Twilight says the same thing that we're thinking, like, Oh, tell me she's not. She is. Exactly. Kindred spirits, bro. Kindred spirits. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I, mean, I love music and I found the song really cute. But what happened is we were talking to another one of our guests, uh, Ethan from Alicorn Radio, and he says he skips all the songs in the show for some reason. And oh, then yeah. uh, I, then he said that he thought Smile was a fan-made song and he was and when he found out it was actually canon, that taught him a lesson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, exactly. Daniel Ingram is the boss. Yep, Daniel yep. Ingram, like, he, he has... I think he is some evil mastermind who like puts this like sound wave inhibitor in your brain, and like when you hear it, you just can't get it out. And it's just hanging playing, it's just, uh, ridiculous. Yeah, right now we have, I mean, we all have winter wrap up stuck in the back of our heads. Yeah, exactly. but right now the evil one is uh, Bab Seed, and, oh, yeah. and and until a new one comes out, that's going to be the new yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Mm. That is a good song. Yeah. So, um, where was I? How do you become a fan? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Uh, they're okay with it. At first, my mom was like, oh, Jill, you can't be serious. And then she, like, saw that it wasn't that bad. And then I was just, and then all my friends and stuff like that, they've just been like... At first, you know, I've actually converted most of them because most of them thought I was watching the BSG3 crap. So, it was just like... Are you serious, dude? And I used to watch, I used to babysit kids who watched that. And I was just like, what is this garbage? What is this? So the fact that I like this new one, I was just like, okay, this is great. And, um, and then when I showed them what it was, I, I showed them, um, what the heck's that dude's name? Uh, CR from, uh, oh, nostalgia the, CR from uh, Nostalgia Critic, uh, that guy with the glasses review. And then they understood that, oh, I thought this was the stupid one. And then they started to like it. And, uh, and then, then most of them are just like, oh, that's pretty cool. They like that. So, some of them are like, okay, it's a pretty good show. Some of them are like, hey, it's not for me, but I wouldn't say it's crap at all. So that's why they pretty much are just like that. Oh, that's it's awesome. Different. Because for me, my family thinks, well, it's just a passing. I, I think my mom is okay with it. My dad is okay with it. My sister don't like ponies. My friends are okay with it. But eh, they don't judge me. Yeah, exactly. As my folks still think I'm mad. <laughs> really? <laughs> they use it against me. It's like, do something useful. You know, you're constantly on this pony thing. And like, uh... <laughs> Soon. Soon. Yeah. They have to suffer from they have to suffer from looking at a Pinkie Pie hanging from my car's rear view mirror. Because oh, it's not my okay. car, it's theirs. <laughs> <laughs> oh soon. They'll be converted soon. <laughs> but I say it's difficult to convert them because the, my parents are still part of the generation that believe Simpsons and Family Guy are kids' shows. Oh my god. No. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. So because uh, they they, they I, are they are in the set that cartoons are for kids. Oh, wow. Wow. We'll tell them watching South Park. Yeah, Red Rocket, Red Rocket. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> oh. Parents need to be up to date with what's trending right now. And cartoons are not for kids anymore. Like, there are some well, cartoons no, no, no. that... They're not just for kids anymore. Yeah, I mean... They're not just for kids anymore. Yeah. And you'd be crazy, crazy not to sit watching. <laughs> oh, I love your app. Also, <laughs> oh, Dragon Ball. Well, we, we'll get into that soon. So, um... I was saying I did Gravity Falls, but yeah, I love Dragon Ball too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, let's move on to q and It's interesting how I uh, got in touch with you. You posted Dragon Balls and I talked to you about Dragon Balls. Dragon yeah. Balls. 
Not Dragon Z. Balls. Yeah. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> that was cool, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I love Dragon Ball Z. It, that's been my uh, it's primary inspiration since I was a kid. So, like, I just love that show so much. I think it's just imprinted on my brain so much. I, I can't go in and I'm watching it. Same here, because um, for me, when I was a young young lad, um, Dragon Ball was always, well, I, I won't say my getaway from reality, but it was so much fun where the character, well, it's basically a hero fight villain kind of character and a type of show where hero always wins. That's about it. Exactly. That's all. It didn't need no fancy plot, didn't need no love story. It was just guys kicking ass and beating people up, blowing up planets and stuff. And that's all I needed to see. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, Dragon Ball back in the days, it was awesome. It was. It was freaking awesome. It's still awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's true. But too bad the video games are uh, not that awesome. <laughs> well, no, you know, see, this is what I say. I, uh, for instance, I love Dragon Ball Z Budokai. One Dragon Ball Z Budokai three, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi one, and Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi three, and then Raging Blast is okay, but otherwise they're just eh. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, I was even more old school because when I played Dragon Ball the game, it was on the Super Nintendo. One. No, Super Nintendo. Oh, Nintendo. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because oh, yeah, I, I I I had that too. Uh, that was. It was ridiculous, the graphics on it. Yeah, but back in the days, those were the games, man. Like, um, you want Dragon Ball? Here, play this game. Oh, yeah, you want to be Goku Super Saiyan? You need to install codes. Like, oh, God, no. And yeah, back you then... want to be Goku Super Saiyan or Gogeta? <laughs> you have to push all these codes oh. and then unlock it. <laughs> oh, back in the day when codes were the ball in games. Yeah, I mean, like Game Sharks, yeah. man. But still, um, yeah. But still, here's an interesting question for you, Jax. You love all this. Well, how would I put it? Manly um, cartoons like Dragon Balls, and I believe you also like um, Cowboy Bebop, right? Oh yeah, I like Cowboy Bebop. I like a bunch of different anime, and I like uh, so many different animes and so many different like live action shows too. It's just um, I, just, I love it. So, in your opinion, um, how has the Western show been for you like has it attract you or has it um push you away from enjoying the shows from um, from enjoying anime or just enjoying cartoon well um your influence from anime enjoying uh, western cartoons in general oh no um i pretty much love them the same i mean the sad thing is like there's a bunch of great anime but like the western cartoons are just going a bit downhill now like i mean there's only i'd say nine or ten shows that I would consider just absolutely great cartoons playing right now. And then um, I think that's uh, My Little Pony, of course, uh, Young Justice. Uh, Little Special? I think of it. Uh, you know what? I am not going to lie. I've watched every episode so far. That just Same here. I love that no. show. I really no, love that for- show now. Freaking uh, Hirosashi, he got me hooked on. And then my friend Saber Spark, he started singing that little list, little list. And I was like, Saber, shut up. Shut up. I'm not watching it. I'm not watching it. And then, like two hours later, he's streaming us watching it together. And I'm just like, I can't believe this. And then, uh, wait, wait. You streamed it like in his house or over the net? No, we streamed it over the internet because, like, he what he, we did was we just like put it up on, over Skype. He put the link bit to the video in the description, uh, put the video thing in the chat, and then all of us timed up and watched it at the same time. And I was just like, I'm, Final Draft was with us when we watched, it. and I was just like, I can't believe I'm watching this. I can't believe I'm watching this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the same Brony phenomena thing. I can't believe I'm watching this, but you watched it. <laughs> You can uh, feel like, the Brony vibe in it, man. You can really feel the vibes in it. Uh, the music, that freaking song, that was jammed into my brain for like days. <laughs> Which one? The, <laughs> the freaking oh, song. Yeah, there's a little, uh, little uptight, but there's not going to be dumb or whatever. It's like, uh, this littlest, littlest. Uh, that, that, was, that was they, good. They that was good. I was singing that over and over, and I was like, Saber, shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm going to slow. I was like, Saber, when I see you at BronyCon next year, which is in Baltimore, my turf, I'm going to freaking give you the biggest bear hug of all time. <laughs> Just eat a crap. Awesome. Uh, I mean, so which is your favorite pet? Uh, the panda. <laughs> Penny. Uh, Penny. Yeah, Penny. I don't Penny know Link. their names. I ain't into Penny it Link. like that. I love, oh yeah, I like the panda. Well, I like she... Sunil. 
mongoose in there. Which one? Is that the, it, mongoose? the mongoose? Yeah. The mongoose. Because he's Indian. He remind yeah. He reminds me of. He looks to me like Flippy from Happy Tree Friends. <laughs> Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's why I like him. That's why he looks looks like Flippy from Happy Tree. You think we have to break into the largest ever pet shop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That voice really got me, and it's Peter New. And no, he does a great Indian accent. Yeah. Oh, God. Peter New, he's very talented. He's very talented. He's he awesome. should have more roles on My Little Pony besides just, yep. He has. He has a lot of roles on My Little Pony. Oh, he he's does? Like, yeah, a lot. He was um that doctor, that uh, Rainbow Dash. Boy, like when she was trying to break into the hospital ceiling, he was the doctor there. Oh, okay. He was um he, he he was several other characters. I can't name them all right now, but he yeah he's been a lot. Yeah, the thing is, Peter New plays a lot of roles on My Little Pony, but if you do notice, um ninety percent of the show is all mares. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> it's him and Lito Car. Yeah. <laughs> Even Spike is voiced by what, Kathy Westlock? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Spike voice by Kathy Westlock. Uh, so even the guys are voiced by girls. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a little kid, so I, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> so y- you would say that um, most of the American cartoons are not up to par with the old cartoons, like what we discussed, like uh, Des- Dexter's Labs uh, and uh, Johnny Brad, Bravo. Brad, and Arnold, like, this is way too many cats. Like, the thing is, back then, like, if I, if you ask me, oh, so which cartoons did you like back then, it's going to take me, like, 15 minutes to name all of them. But, like, if you ask me now, I could be like, oh, like, less than a minute. Oh, this, 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 this. It's just like... That's true. I mean, as for me, when I was growing up, I never been a fan of um, cartoons. Like, I do watch Cartoon Network a lot. I do watch Disney and I do watch Nickelodeon. Like, the cartoon that you list out, yeah, I enjoy them. But what attracted me was I enjoy the animes because, like, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach even. I mean, those are the cartoons that I would say I grew up with. But now that I'm thinking about it, uh, they follow a strict formula of this thing happened, that thing happened, and repeat. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, personally, I got into those shows for the wrong reasons, because they have the boom anime babes to make me think the wrong thing. But yeah. That's just... <laughs> but, yeah, same but yeah, thing, I, same I, thing. I love those shows. Yeah, same thing. But I, I remember my day of initiation when the people came to my house and installed satellite TV when I was eight years old. <laughs> and, uh, wow, I spent three days just watching everything on Cartoon Network. <laughs> Straight through. Awesome. Yeah, see, like, the thing with Cartoon Network is, like, back then, there's an, a numeral, I like, I know it's not a numeral, but, like, so many damn good cartoons that it's just too many to count. Same with Nickelodeon, same with Fox Kids, same with Disney Channel. But, like, now, like, I'd say there's, like, ten or, like, ten or more, like, I, I can think of right off the top of my head that are pretty damn good. That's, like, Dan vs. Legend of Korra, Gra- Gravity Falls, Regular Show, Adventure Time, Transformers Prime. Uh, I don't know if the Avengers cartoon is still going, but that was good. Uh, Young Justice, My Little Pony, Friendship and Magic, and Phineas and Ferb. Those are the ones that I go, okay, yeah, those are pretty damn good. They're catered to all adults. And uh, I know there's more out there, but uh, just those are the ones that just come to the top of my head. Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I agree. And nowadays, I don't know why, but most of the original Disney channels, they're trying to go for live action. Like, when yeah. they call... When they call upon um, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, the Hannah Montanas and whatnot, I mean, I, I think that start Disney Channel's decline, and also Nickelodeon started well, doing yeah. the same thing. Mm-hmm. Nickelodeon, like Nickelodeon's thing is they just hold on to a project and will not let it die. Like SpongeBob, that what a thing to say would have been done a few years ago. Like if you compare the new episodes of SpongeBob to the old episodes, it's just like my God. You used to be so funny, man. Yeah, the what older ones. To you? Like it's like, and then like same with Fairly Odd Parents. This show used to be so hilarious, and like after you joined, it just, it just, it just went downhill. It's like, it's like a fighter who keeps going. It's like, dude, you've already won the fight. Why are you going on, man? You don't need to do anymore. Just end it. Could use, it could use a reboot. You could really use a reboot. We oh, should. Which one? All of these shows. No, 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 no. could use a reboot. Like, change things. No, no, kill it, kill it. Because it's already been running too long. Because a, a reboot only... I, I would say... I a think re- you should reboot something like... For instance, um... Let me say this. 
Spectacular Spider-Man, that is like one of my favorite cartoons of all time just because it was so well put together. I mm. freaking despise Ultimate Spider-Man that's on right now that because it, it just pissed me off that something like so great and spectacular. Yeah. Like it was like got taken off early by because some freaking Disney bought the rights so they couldn't they didn't want to continue uh, with Spectacular so they made their own unique Spider-Man Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man which this, is pretty bad. This and true. um it's, and then, like, if they rebooted that, then I'd be like, oh, hell yeah, I- I'll watch that. I mean, but, I, uh, I personally love... Still... Sorry? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I personally love Spectacular Spider-Man. I mean, that show has a really good story to tell. And the exactly. love the love triangle between Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker with and Mary Osborne. Jane, that, that was good. Like, uh, I don't it know. Great. It was phenomenal. Like, I consider... Per- much as I love the '90s Spider-Man cartoon uh, for nostalgia reasons, like I consider that Spider-Man to be the greatest incarnation of Spider-Man ever. Seriously, I consider that. True. I mean, when Ultimate Spider-Man came up, like, oh god, no! Why is he breaking the fourth wall like this? Like, ah. Uh... Yeah, like yeah, he's acting more like Deadpool than Spider-Man, and then he doesn't even sound like uh, freaking Spider-Man. It just sounds like I call it Ultimate Drake Bell because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> not freaking Spider-Man. This is the ultimate Drake. And I have nothing against Drake Bell. I loved the show when I was a kid. And Drake and Josh was cool, I guess. Not as cool as Peter and Kel, but it was still cool. And then true, was, true. Um, I, I don't know. I mean... But what about you, Norman? Since, uh, you know, you're a fan of um, Kim Possible, right? Yes. Would you like to see that rebooted? No, because it already ran. And, okay, um... A part what of... It was her, with, like, her daughter. Ron Stoppable and her daughter. Or something like that. Uh, you I... married? Yeah, no, um... Uh, they were dating. And I know they were shipped or they and dating. They were dating because, like, in the very last episode, they fly off in a car and they, like, kiss because uh, they beat some alien things or whatever. <laughs> and then, like, uh, then they just fly off. So I'm saying, like, how would you feel if, like, they did a new series based on uh, her daughter? Or well, something? well, funny enough, I've never been asked this question, but um, I, that would be awesome because, well, we all know that Kim Possible was a good show because I was from that fandom before and it could use a comeback somehow. They're coming back with uh, Boy Meets World, that show. They, yeah, they're like remaking that. or No, not remaking it, like uh, having a series on that based on Topanga and Corey's daughter or something. Huh. I mean, he has the dangerous part about um, shipping couple thing because let's just say that um, with the whole Kim Possible issue right now, um, okay, we know that Kim and Ron got shipped, got married, have kids. And then, like, we also know that Shigo and Dragon somehow got shipped, married, got kids. I mean, near the end, they 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 don't show them kissing, but it somehow... Um, Isn't he too old for her? That's what I always thought. I don't Even know. Even in that emotion sickness episode where they had that little bug on them that made them, like, feel emotional. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was hilarious. It just... I felt like, isn't he too old for her? Yeah, but <laughs> in this day and age, anything goes. I guess, but that would just weird me out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, Draken doesn't look old. He's the same age as um, Kim's dad. And how old she go? Because she looks close to Kim's dad. Even though mm. that was weird when she started going out with Mark and in that episode where uh, she became good. Yeah, I think she go is around her mid twenties because she has been doing this espionage thing for a while, and she was already a superhero in uh, Go City. Okay, so I mean, yeah, mid twenties, early thirties. So. Yeah. Okay, let's continue on to the topic of um, shipping characters and seeing their child doing stuff. I mean, uh, just before that, we were talking about reboots. Um, people, I mean, I think we had this conversation. I don't know if it was you and me or someone else. We had this conversation about how there was a um, chance that if My Little Pony was to end soon and there were to be a reboot, how about that reboot being like the CMC? Having Bas- their own series. Basically, it's what with the whole married thing, having kids, but it's from a different character point of view. Never mind, I'll stick with that um but, but would that even be considered a reboot though because it's still like doesn't reboot mean like you got different stuff different characters all that like that would be just a continuation like a dragon ball so and dragon ball z yeah a spin-off, spin-off. <laughs> like because dragon ball and then there's dragon ball z like naruto naruto shippuden and, yeah so. i mean true it's just a spin-off but um interestingly enough naruto was not 
uh, Naruto Shippuden was not actually a spin-off. It was just a continuation was, of his. Yeah, was, yeah. I don't know how. That was just a continuation. They just wanted to differentiate it because like, they started noticing big differences. Yeah, I don't know why they did that because in the comic it didn't do anything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, continuing on with this. Um. Well, let's just say future episodes. Um, a spin-off of the CMCs with Cutie Mark. You know what? I think that already exists. And it's called uh, A Slice of Life by, by Egophiliac. Ah, oh, yes. Mm, I need to look that up. Yeah, because um, instead of concentrating on the CMCs, it's concentrating on Pound Cake and Carrot Cake. Um, pound Cake and... Pumpkin Cake. Yeah, Pumpkin Cake. Like how they want to get their Cutie Marks and they're afraid of stuff. I mean, go watch that or go read that. That's much better. Okay, I'll check that out. So Dan, any question for Jax? Jax, being uh, in that category of being a bodybuilder, right? You are? Oh no, I'm not a bodybuilder. Yet. Oh, like, you're not. I'm so I, sorry. Oh no, I oh, know it's fine, dude. Like I, I'm, I'm really into fitness and want to be athletic, and I'm friends with tons of bodybuilders. So right now, like they're helping me. So like my, I'm looking forward to my YouTube channel like coming up this net new year if the minds don't get our asses first but like uh yeah if like i'm looking up to this new year because um they've helped me so much so i can i have some ideas for videos i'm not gonna share anything no spoilers right now but yeah it's gonna be something to look forward to on my channel awesome because from what i saw your channel it's basically an update of how your progress is i think week five something like that and there's more there's more more than that yeah. Oh yeah. Like originally, my channel started out like kind of like an I'm a channel, like the I'm a Vegeta, I'm a Goku and stuff like it, because I would just upload uh, quotes from Dragon Ball Z, and I found them like I, I just found them like awesome and upload them, and a bunch of people like started following me for it, and I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I I did my MLP speech uh, and for my public speaking college class, and so oh, I, I put that, that on YouTube. Yeah, I put that on my YouTube. And uh, I think that got on Equestria Daily, so some bronies started following me then. And then I would just upload randomly stuff like that. And then um, I think my popularity really kicked off is when um, I read My Little Dashy, and then like I like posted a thing the next morning just uh, in my tank top after MMA class, and I was just like, uh, hey, guys, I just read them this great story. I really suggest you check it out. And many people thought I was trolling, and then they were like, why the heck does this – a black guy crying to a pony with a multicolored mane like I don't get it and then they read it and like thank you so much for showing me this and then I think that's kind of what kicked it off and then I started meeting so many uh, great people after that uh, so you know what actually what's funny is uh, what you want um, Griffin Leckerman I, he I, I had um, I didn't know it was him at the time but um, he had sent me a message that said Hey man, I just read that My Little Dashy story. It was the most beautiful thing ever. I just wanted to show you this picture I made. It was him hugging Rainbow Dash, that famous pic of that guy Sorry. hugging Rainbow Dash. And I was just like, oh my god, this is beautiful, dude. Awesome. And then like later on, I found out he was Twilight, the guy doing all those delicious memes. And then yeah. the guy who was telling, are you proud to be a brony? And I was just like, well, I've been a fan of you for so long, and now we're like close buds. That's pretty cool. <laughs> just, you were the dude was... who made Black Griffin read My Little Dashy? Yeah. Wow. Oh, funny story. You want you want to know a funny fact about the Twilight? Uh, sorry, the Rainbow Dash pick he did. What? In that pick, he was hugging his mother. Oh, that's yeah. sad. Oh, that's so adorable. That is so. <laughs> and then um, he edited her out and put Rainbow Dash instead. Oh, I did not know that. I'm gonna go tell him, get on him for that. I'm like, you better upload the real picture. <laughs> That's it's probably on your face. It's probably on his Facebook if you can find this. No, yeah, I don't. I, I don't think I, so. I, I, I got him on Facebook, so I'll try and find see what. Uh, I don't know. So um, he's so awesome. Yes, he's he, he, an android, but he's just awesome. Yeah, he is. Like um, oh, the the chance that I got to meet him, it was really awesome. So um, here here's an interesting question. Like based on your channel, um, you don't upload much brony stuff. You mostly upload fitness tips. Um, personal videos and even Dragon Ball stuff. So, how did you became a, a brony celebrity in the fandom? Like, I think it's the brony oh, react thing. I, I think that's it. No, I think it was okay. Um, a few months ago, like 
back in January, February, I uploaded a video of me talking about how I was bullied as a kid and, like, how you guys can overcome it and stuff like that. And then one of the moderators from Brony State, Scoot Scootaloo, messaged me if I would like to be in a video, um, a, a big podcast on bullying, like a PSA thing. And then I go into that podcast and I just I say my story. And then um, I met pa Paleo Steno. And then uh, me and Paleo kind of kicked it off and stuff like that. We were, like, pretty cool. And then um, I think I just started uploading random videos, too. But we, me and Paleo, were talking right now and then. And um, I I was uh, – many people – and then uh, Dusty Cat came along. And many people started, like, com comparing me and him to – it's like, yo, you're not the manless brony. Jax plays manless brony. Yo, you're not the manless brony. Dusty's manless brony. And I was just like, what? And then I just kind of was ignoring it. And then – so I finally watched his video. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And then um, – I was like, oh, he knows my name. That's pretty cool. I was like, hey, man, that's awesome you know my name. You're awesome, dude. And he's like, hey, thanks. And so me and him started talking. We became good friends. And uh, then I, that's, I was one of the first people on his stay brony, my friend. I think I was on, like, the fourth episode of that that he did. And um, uh I think it just went from there. Like after I did the stay brony, my friends saying uh, AC Race Fest asked me if I would like to do a Bronies react, and I was like, oh, I love Bronies react, so sure, I'll do it. I'll do one. And then like I did I, my first time, I had no idea what I was doing, so I was just like, <laughs> uh, I just was like, All right, uh, let me just be a big buff black guy singing along. <laughs> and just like singing Wait, along. That, that was your first video. Uh, for AC Race Best, yeah, I did the my first video with AC Race Best Bronies Rack was the one where um, Bronies Rack the wedding finale, yeah, wedding finale. Oh, uh, I I saw that. And... I did that, and then um, he would ask me. Uh, then me and him would just talk, and you know, then um, uh, then I did the second video, and then he asked me, oh, would you like to be interested in uh, Brony Gunnam style? And then like, like he, and he knows that if he asked me, I I'll do it just because I have no like shame whatever and then i think my popularity kicked off the most when i was at brony con because uh, one of the things like uh i am known for there is i started a flash mob because <laughs> um they were singing smile and i started doing a carlton dance from fresh <laughs> and then i started walking with it and then people started following and then like uh me and saber got into it and then i was just like oh yeah and then i was just walking around and then final draft when i met him he just it, he i think he was one of the main reasons because he introduced me to so many people and i've made so many great connections thanks to that man i freaking love him he's awesome he is so you've cool. been to any other brony conventions besides BronyCon? Oh, no because you know what's funny is i had no idea there were any other conventions besides BronyCon. my first one they're like yo you going to everfree northwest i'm like the hell is that? And I'm just like looking at him. I'm just like, okay, Everfree Northwest? Uh, no, uh, EQLA, no. And then, because I hadn't saved up money for any of those. And then, uh, uh, this year, uh, following year, I'm going to be going to, uh, I'm going to try e EQLA, Everfree Northwest, Brony Con, and then that's it. Because I think since there's like 30 different conventions next year, like it kind of loses its uniqueness if it goes like so many of them. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm just going to three, and that'll be good. Yeah, there was some speculation where Winter Moon Atlanta got cancelled that Hasbro might not be approving all of the Brony Cons because there's so many of them. Yeah, there were so dang many of them. Well, at least there's the one big one, which is going to be on my turf in Baltimore. So just that'll be cool. So um, just uh, sidetrack a little bit. By any chance, have you been to Malaysia? I uh, no, I haven't. How is it there? Oh, it's cool. It, no, it's not very cool. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think cool by in the term cool, not the wet, uh, the climate cool. No, there's cool and there's just plain cold. <laughs> oh, okay. No, uh, we're 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 a balance. You'll sweat, but it's nice and toasty here. <laughs> yeah, well, I I, I can guess. Sauna. I can guess right now. It's a bit. Cool for you, right? Uh, yeah, it's like 40 degrees outside. Yeah, you, you'll enjoy it here. Wait, 40 Celsius or 40 Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit. Okay. Remember, yeah. they use... 40 Celsius is what we have touched a few times. Yeah. No, remember, oh. they use Imperial. We use Matrix. Yeah, yeah. Because, no, 40 is like still like a very in-the-middle kind of thing. It could... It's possible on both ends. I don't know. I hate conversions. <laughs> So, Jax, have you heard of any of these uh, people who have ponified, you know, these big workout schedules? You know, have you heard of Insanity? I think it's been ponified already. Oh, yeah, I saw that. One of my, because um, one of my subscribers knows that I like to do Insanity every now and then because it's a great workout. So oh, I saw okay. it. You've done Insanity more than once? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, dude. 
No, let me tell you, once you get to the max interval ones, I don't care how tough you are. You can be like freaking have Goku stamina. It'll kick your ass. I don't care. Cause I was try. I was like doing 20 minutes of that. And then I realized I had 40 minutes left. I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, give me a second. Um, for, the, for those who don't know, what, what is this insanity? It's, it's a, a very workout. insane workout program that you're just using your body weight, but you like, are doing such high intensity movements like burpees, plyometric push ups, um, jumps, and all this stuff. And you only get like 30 seconds of rest in between. And you do this for like 40 to 60 minutes. And if, dude, if you ever want abs, you ever want abs for the girls, you know, cuts for the, yeah, ladies, then that. Just get that. And you'll, they'll start popping up and you'll be like, oh, dang, yeah. Me and my friends yeah. have been putting it off for a long, long time. <laughs> we said, we're going to do it next week. We're going to do it next month. We're going to do it next year. But we're going to do it. Never. Because <laughs> we look at it and then we're like, okay, not today. Never mind. Exactly. <laughs> and then we hear the horror stories that come out. Uh, yes. Yes, the horror stories. Oh, I play God. Zombs Run on my phone. Have you heard of that game? The, the one that uses your GPS to track your running speed and then it starts to put zombies behind you, so you better run. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I haven't heard of that. Where do I get this? Uh, do you have a smartphone? Yes, I do. Uh, which one is it? Uh, a droid. Uh, droid. You can get it from the market. It's just um, you pay for it at about $2 or something. Just search for Zombie Run. Zombie Run. I'm doing do that right now. Because I freaking love Zombie Runs. So I, I freaking love it. Yeah, it's, it's got a storyline and everything, and it uses your GPS to track the phone in your pocket. So when your zombies behind you, you have to put your headphones on, and it tells you how far they are, and you better run. That can oh, be okay. safe. <laughs> yeah. What type of zombies are they? The walking ones, like. Rrr, rrr. I think it's the running zombies. You can hear, you can One hear them coming, so you'll know how close they are based on the volume. Oh, God. The closer they are, like. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Oh, God. Would, that I, can I, be. I'll probably get like some post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> behind me, I'm like, get out of the head. <laughs> that can be safe. Yeah. Dude, I was just taking a job. Well, you were jogging a little too well. <laughs> You're a zombie. Right. Yeah. Ah, I just remembered my question. Wow, zombies saved me. <laughs> anyway, um, Jack, if I remember right, did you or Dusty challenge each other to an arm wrestling contest at BronyCon? Uh, no, okay, this, let me explain this. Okay, I want to clear something up. Okay, this is what happened. I came up behind and I was like, ah, and people for some reason thought that we were going to have an arm wrestling contest. We didn't. Look, this is what happened. I have a video of this too. Um, on my channel, I uploaded the first day of Brony Con. You can see me and Dusty have our little arm wrestling thing. And I'm not going to lie, uh, Dusty is a strong guy, okay? And I am not, and this is not, this is going to sound like an excuse, okay? I was sore from working out the day before. So, like, I was trying to hold my ground, but I couldn't really get a good grip because my forearms were still, like, sore. <laughs> and so when we were doing our grip challenge, it looked like it, we were, like, doing good at first and then he kind of started pushing me back a bit and then it was just like ah and then we just gave each other a big bear hug yeah because i remember he saying that it was a draw mm -hmm. <laughs> it was basically it was basically a draw well i mean um dusty cat can have the title of most manless brony but i have to say you're the most uh buff brony out there oh thank you <laughs> thank you uh, like, did you do I november did, did you do november i had a goatee for november ah okay yeah, so, that like, that I guess I... Count, right? That doesn't count, I think. I don't know. It doesn't count, but you only need just a mustache. Uh, I, no beards, no... You cannot let it grow and touch your chin or something like that. Oh, okay. Well, I body. guess I just did fully. I just had my goatee all the time. The FOB servers were mean to me. I couldn't upload. Oh, you still can. You can just email them and give a good excuse why you can't. You can? Yeah, they sent in... They sent out emails. You just said you better have a damn good reason why, and I'm like... Yeah, you do have... Because you couldn't upload it to the server and you can't log in. The thing in. is that I sent the email to King Harold and he said that, uh, you know, it works. I've tried it and I'm like, it just doesn't work. I don't know. Malaysian internet is being mean to me. I, I uploaded mine. <laughs> but anyway, being the most buff bony, brony out there, um, have you heard of this one guy um, who cosplays as Snowflake? Is Snowflake the Roid Rage guy? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I seen that guy. I tried to get, I, I want to say, yeah, hey, man, respect, dude. And then the guy didn't reply to me back on Twitter, so I was just like, fine, forget <laughs> you. I'm trying to give you a manly promise, but no, you know. Yeah, it's whatever. I'm joking. Like, I'm pretty sure he's a nice guy. I, I, I just tried, I tweeted at him, hey, man. Bro, I didn't get no response. And yeah. So I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. But, yeah, I've seen him. That's pretty good for him. And I'm not, remember, I'm not, like, a cocky person or anything like that at all. I'm, like, I'm a very humble person. That's just the way I've been brought up. So it's just, like, ah, good for him. And if people want to say, oh, if he's manly, yeah, go. That's good. That's great. Yeah, I mean, he is awesome. But, hey, like I said, most buff brony goes to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I have a lot of bodybuilding friends. So, like, if I, like, showed him that, that guy, because, like, I have bodybuilding friends who are, like, ten of me, like, in one person. And so, like, if I show him, like, that, he'd be like, what the heck? You're losing this guy? No, you're getting to the gym with me right now. Okay, come on. You're going 10,000 curls, 20,000 push-ups. Get down. Now, now, now. <laughs> oh, God. What have I started? You can exactly. imagine, like, if there's a gym that is exclusively for bronies out there, somewhere, imagine that happening or something like that. What kind of conversations will happen in there? Basically, awesome brony conversations. Like, oh, did you see that one episode with Fluttershy? Oh, man, that was awesome. And I think Philip finishes his, like, uh, you know, pull-ups, and then he gets down, wipes his sweat, and goes, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> no, but I love that guy. I love seeing him at EQLA. He looked he was freaking hysterical. I was just like, I'm so happy that a buff dude is represented. That is awesome. I love any guy who works out and does MLP. Yeah, yeah and awesome. I, I and I also think that he also did a mob, what do you call it? Mob, mob ring? Mob flash mob? Yeah, flash mob. I think he also oh, did good. a flash mob. And he did the Gangnam style dance. Oh, wait, no, because uh, uh, Tara started that, though. No, I, I think she talked about it and then he went out on the hallway and dance and the song played and everybody joined in. Exactly, yeah. That, oh, yeah I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'll go, well, yeah, if he did start, then badass, man. That's freaking respect. Respect. Anyway, um, I think we've been running long, so um, before we wrap up, do you have any questions for us? Uh, sure. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, what, what, what caused you to start the show? What made you want to start the show? I love this question. So, um, <laughs> Dan, do you want to answer it or should yeah, I? Sorry. No, not when you started the show, you should answer it. Okay, well, basically what I, my, what my goal was is to promote Malaysian artists. And since I know a lot of talented Malaysian artists, I thought that, hey, they need to be showcased and why not do a podcast? And I was also inspired by Bronyville and some other podcasts I listened. And, well, um, being inspired by them and starting the show, um. I don't know, I mean, it's basically I wanted to highlight other people and their talents because Malaysia being a little country that we are, nobody really pays us any attention. So I did the show and in hopes of promoting artists and talent. And well, it became the beast that it is now. We talked to Dusty Cat, we talked to you, we, we talked to Final Draft, we even talked to Michelle Kriber and well... The goal is still to promote Malaysian artists, and if there are any out there, um, do give us an email and we'll promote you. Seriously, like, uh, nobody's wanting to be on the show because they're shy. <laughs> That's silly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, shy. it's cool. It's cool. But I do enjoy doing this every week. And you're like, you know, you two are like Fluttershy fans and totally assertive people. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Fluttershy, yeah, we, we got respect. Fluttershy, less than zero. That's kindred spirits, man. Kindred spirits. Yeah, yeah. Bro, hoof. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. with all those randomness out of the way, um, thanks, Jack, for being on the show. Hope you enjoy yourself. Well, thank you for having me. I had a great time, and it was great meeting you too. It was our pleasure. And moving on to the next topic is shout-outs. And my shout-out is for all you, Jax. Thank you for being on again. Oh, no problem. Anytime. And also to Brief Fate. The voice actress oh, who played Pinkie Pie. She did play Pinkie Pie, right? P- Pinkie Pie, right? Yeah, she played Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Hey, babe, me and her have been going out and out for about a year in my mind. It's just... <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, awkward. But anyway... Um... No, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> she knows, uh, she knows. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, shout out goes to her because she introduced me to this Pokemon Battle game on the PC. So I'm blaming you and come on because I need to duel with you. We're being blamed for video games. Did you know that she's blaming you for that? I think, was it Full Papers or Final Draft was blaming me for the, the Civilizations mod? <laughs> Full Papers. blaming me because I introduced them to the Celestial mod for Civilizations. Oh, it could be both, man, because um, <laughs> as far as I know, Full Papers... <laughs> Oh, no, paper really paper. The other one wanted. One said, "I'm not playing." Oh yeah, Final Draft doesn't use mods, yes. so it must be four papers. <laughs> Hashtag blame Daniel. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting trending, folks. So There's a lot of things to blame me for. So anyway, Dan, um, who uh, who you who, who do you have to shout out to? Well, shout out to uh, Emilio, the one other co-host on this show. Well, not one other. We have a few other co-hosts. Emilio, who can't be here today. Well, thanks for selling me the microphone. Although I haven't gone to collect it yet. But yeah, great deal. Awesome. And Jax, do you have a shout-out to give? Uh, I have a shout-out to all the bronies out there, all the lovely ladies you can call me, 750 girl, and just like let me know what kind of videos you want to see when I come back, and I will try to oblige. And th- I want to give a shout-out to you two right here, my Malaysian brony friends, for inviting me to the show. And thank you all for having me. In. It was so uh, great. Oh, you're welcome, Hold on a second. Jeff. What do you mean by when you're back? Well, I'm on hiatus right now. Oh, okay, okay. On, From YouTube, just... Yeah, I've been on hiatus from YouTube for, like, a while because I've been back in school. So, but I'm about to be on my winter break soon after I finish my finals. Mm, okay. So I'll probably okay. make videos then. Anyway, um, with that abrupt ending out of the way... Well, I hope I said that right. Thanks for the shout-out, Jax. Um, it's rare that we get a shout-out. <laughs> yep. You're the first one to shout-out to us. Yay! Oh, no, I'm sure. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I try to be good to people who are good to me. Yes. Anyway, hey. um, before we leave, um, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me on my Twitter, JaxBlade07, of my Facebook page, at JaxBlade07, and, of course, on YouTube, JaxBlade07. Well, so just do a Google search for JaxBlade07 and you'll find him. O as right. in the zero, right? What happened now, thanks, because you asked this, before we leave, I have to ask you one question. Why Jack's Blade? Oh, Jack's Blade. Okay, then. Um, there's, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Mortal Kombat. I'm a big fan of Blade. So, like, basically, I took the character from Jack's from Mortal Kombat, then Blade from this movie Blade, and then Zero Seven from Zero, um, from the, uh, just because there's seven Dragon Balls. Ah, okay. You know what, Jax? I thought yeah. that Jax was from that Mortal Kombat. Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I had a, I had a right. feeling, seriously. That's where I got it from. Like, people ask, oh, where'd you get the name? It's like, yeah, more of them. That's like my YouTube name. It's Leviosa626. <laughs> Leviosa from Harry Potter, 626 from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's my YouTube channel, although I prefer to be called St. Picky. <laughs> She's my current nickname. Oh. Well, wait for him to change to another fandom and he'll get another fan name. <laughs> No, I'm saying I got St. Pinky before I was a brony, even before I started watching Care Bears. So it's like, hey, that's going to stick. Awesomeness. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, or you just want to email us, you can reach us at show at gmail.com. And also, you can reach us on Twitter. Um, the show's Twitter page is the MBS show. And Dot I'm... Com. Sorry, um, it's Twitter. Oh, oh, crap. What the heck am I doing? Yeah. What the heck are you doing? So anyway, um, my train of thought is going all over the place today. No food in system. That's why. <laughs> I had a durian buffet for dinner last night. Uh, uh, anyway, um, my bad because it's supposed to be at the MBS show, and I'm at Norman Sanzo and Danny Boy at Saint Pinky S T P I N K I E and Jack was at Jack's Blade O Seven, and also oh. please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, like our Facebook page, and links will all be provided. All these links are in the show notes. Yeah, that. So anyway, once again, thanks, Jack, for being on the show. Um, I hope it wasn't short notice. Oh, no, it's fine. It was perfect timing, dude. I did absolutely perfect timing. I and really enjoyed this stuff. And it was our pleasure interviewing you because we don't get to talk to a lot of buff bronies out there. And I think you're the first. <laughs> no, Dusty was the first. He was the manliest brony. Okay, fine. Get your facts right, boy. <laughs> He's still pretty buff, okay? Manly and buff are totally different things. He's both. <laughs> oh, don't get this started who's the manliest brony because we already know Dusty is the manliest brony now Jack's Blade 07 is the buff brony here 
okay, muscular okay. Brody, like a muscular beaver. <laughs> muscular Brody or something. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like some sort of somebody's like Skype name or something. Muscular Brody. <laughs> Oh. oh god <laughs> so anyway I've been Norman Sanzo I've been Daniel Anthony and I'm x and we'll see you next week bye guys bye As for me, when I was growing up, I never been a fan of um, cartoons. Like I do watch Cartoon Network a lot. I do watch Disney and I do watch Nickelodeon. Like the cartoon that you list out, like yeah, I enjoy them. But to say I enjoy mm, not on those channels, like uh, let's just say um, Hot Wheels or any other cartoons like that. I mean, to me, it's just there. But what I was attracted to animation before was sorry. Um, am I making any sense? Because I don't feel like I'm making any sense. Oh, no, keep talking. Yeah, you're going. You're doing good. Okay.